Howdy, how's it going? Welcome back, and uh, howdy if you're new. So today we're going to be continuing the NVMe topic and possibly wrapping this saga up. I've officially reached out to most of the drive manufacturers who offer 2230 drives. So as we've talked about before, drive temps are indeed very important and they should be kept lower when possible. Unfortunately, the temps I've seen in testing seem to be a bit too spicy in many instances, and we're going to cover what Corsair and Sabrent both officially responded with. I asked every one of them the 10 questions you're going to see next, including questions that may seem a bit silly, but they represent some of the myths and rumors that have been spread far and wide on Reddit and Discord. So you're going to learn how important keeping NAND flash cooler is rather than hotter. It's imperative for data retention, lifespan. I really think it's just an important topic to talk about because I think there's a lot of misconceptions and people don't quite know if they have a temp issue until it's too late. So my goal is to prevent that for you to be able to get a little bit more life out of your drive or at least the most life out of your drive. Let's hop right on in. So first I'm going to show you the email from Corsair on the screen. Then I'm going to give you my quick summary and takeaway of what I got out of the email. So if you would like to read the email in full, go right ahead, pause it here, or continue watching to listen to the key points. For warning, I'm a bit dyslexic, so if I jumble up a response or mess anything up, it's not intentional at all. Here are my key takeaways from the Corsair email. The key points that stood out to me, okay? So the first one is that they said optimal temperature range is between 0 and 65 C, and that's measured in Celsius. So the operating temp is measured when you're using a drive. So there was a lot of misconceptions about operating temp and storage temp. And even I was a bit concerned with, you know, the storage temp versus operating temp. I wasn't quite sure until I got this response back and it actually explains it between both Sabre and Corsair the exact same. So storage temp is measured when the drive is on a shelf, not in use. So there's no voltage going through it. There's no power going through it. It's just being stored basically. And that's the measurement of the air temperature around it. So if your office is, you know, 70 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Celsius or whatever, or you've got it in a, a, a garage or something, that's the temperature that it can, you know, be okay at the maximum being stored at. Ideally, you would want to store it lower. The operating temp is what you should primarily focus on because you're going to be using it. Voltage is going to be going through it. That's where you're going to be measuring your temperatures. So operating the drive outside of the specified range can impact data integrity and lifespan, meaning running the drive over its temp range can result in data loss and shorten the lifespan. So that's important to notate that if you do run it outside of its operating temperature range, you know, it's going to possibly damage the drive or shorten its lifespan. NAND flash memory is sensitive to high temperatures. I can't state that strongly enough. NAND flash is sensitive to higher temperatures. There were a few rumors and a few myths saying that NAND flash operates better at higher temperatures, and um, that couldn't be anything further from the truth. I think they might be confusing that with VRAM like on certain GPUs where they are fine running at 90 degrees Celsius and they're fine. But don't confuse VRAM with NAND flash, completely different principles here. So and the next takeaway is that heat sinks, if installed properly, will help and have a moderate impact on temperature and have no harm. Moderate is subjective to the temperatures that you begin with. So if your temperatures are already, you know, well below spec, you know, it, it might give you like a 15 degree difference with, you know, varying heat sinks. The heat sink mod that I created, if you haven't seen it already, please go watch it. That heat sink mod has worked well for at least dozens of people by now. Um, I've used it for a while. A lot of personal people that I know have used it for a while. It's great. It's an absolutely great guide. Just follow the tutorial, watch the three videos I made on it, and don't deviate from the thermal pad sizing or overthink it because I've tried all the variables and you might lead down the rabbit hole that doesn't end well. So the next key takeaway was that drives do not run better at higher temps. Basically that goes back to the other questions and answers. Just don't, don't run these at high temps basically if you can help it. So number six is that keeping temps low will improve the lifespan of the drive. You know, once again, we're jumping right back into the exact same things. Keeping it low is better. Keeping it low is better. Now there is a point of diminishing returns 
if you get it well within range and um, the range that I have on mine allows me to be able to go outside on a really hot day or you know be in the car or something like that where the sun is beating down on it and even with a very high heat scenario I've still got enough cooling performance to give me that buffer room but if I run the drive without a heat sink especially these gen 4 drives they may be running fine for the most part just while gaming but it still gets up in those upper 60s a lot of times and then if you're downloading games i was seeing in the 70s uh, windows does not tell you what your temperature is it does not give you an idea of if it's overheating or about to overheat there are programs like crystal disk mark or crystal disk info but unfortunately crystal disk info doesn't update very often as far as how quickly it's checking for temperatures and it's only going to show you one temp. It's not going to show you the controller temp. It's not going to show you the memory temp. So with that said, you can use a program like Hardware Info. That way you can see the minimum, the maximum, the current, and the average. And then you can make a good assumption or a good um, you know, assessment rather of how your drive is performing under these high stress scenarios like downloading games on Steam. That actually takes a lot of the drive's performance and it can run fairly hot. So if you want to check that out, dive right on it. So the next is going to be the key takeaways from the Saber email. Now their material was a little bit different. I think it's just the process of manufacturing their drives or maybe their firmware that they use. They do have protections in order on their firmware side, but you know, it may, it may vary from drive to drive, but I'm just going to read you exactly what they said. They said their operating temperature range is between 0 and 70 C. The maximum critical temperature is 85 C. Now that's kind of a weird spot right there to be in because you don't want to run it even close to that. If the operating temperature range is between 0 and 70 C, that's where they suggest keeping it. It doesn't mean just because the critical temperature is 85 C that anything below 85 C is, you know, game on perfect. That's not true. That's just what it can reach at its peak before it just like really starts having some serious, serious issues. If you run it at 80 C all the time, you are outside of the operating temperature range and you will shorten the lifespan and possibly throttle the drive and all that good stuff. So the next thing is drives used outside of the operating temperature range will initially throttle and this inhibits IO resulting in lower performance to keep it from overheating. The drive may shut down also to protect the NAND flash. Now in my experience, I have had drives that have thermally shut down. I've had drives that thermally shut down and cut back on. I've also had drives thermally shut down and never cut back on. So I just want to put that into perspective where if you are worried about your data or data laws, you know, definitely keep this well within range. If you are a YOLO kind of person and you know, your data doesn't matter, hey, by all means, go ahead. But the next takeaway is going to be, while the drive is designed to handle this stress, it is best to keep the drive from being overheated for optimal performance and reliability. Now, that right there speaks volumes as well. If you read that carefully, it says it's designed to handle the stress, but it's best to keep the drive from being overheated for optimal performance and reliability. Reliability is a key takeaway in my opinion here. The next one is additional cooling can reduce or eliminate thermal throttling. So there, once again, they do recommend that, hey, cooling it is not a bad idea. The next point is operating temp refers to the temp within the drive in which it is designed to operate. Storage temp applies when the drive is powered off for storage. So the same thing that Corsair said, essentially. The next one is that temperatures can impact performance and data retention. Same thing Corsair said, higher temperatures, lead to worse performance and data retention. So once you go over that operating temperature range, well, that's all on you. And then the next one is drives do not perform better the hotter they get. That Reddit rumor and all the people on Discord who were telling me that all over and over, I just, I don't know where you got that. I'm just saying, none of the drive manufacturers who responded have <laughs> shared that sentiment. So they, they said on the next one was that cooler temps could help with long-term data retention in storage. Temps effects are complicated and can affect data retention in multiple ways. So there you go. They've, they've said it multiple different ways for you. The next point is it is ideal for all drive components to be maintained below the critical temperature to ensure reliability. 
And the next takeaway is drives will throttle as much as possible to lower the temp, but thermal shutdown may occur to stop further damage. Constant operating in an overheated state can damage components and put the drive at higher risk. So I think with that, we've pretty much covered everything they said. You know, if you wanted to pause the emails or read them yourself, by all means, do so. I think that these are very important, uh, you know, questions that I asked because they they kind of ask a lot of the same things that people were were saying on Reddit and saying on Discord. And I wanted to put these myths and rumors to bed. Now, I'm sure there's probably about, you know, a, a good percentage of you people who are going to be like, yeah, you know, you're right. I, I think I should kind of look at my drive temps and and watch and, and see how it does. You know, like I want to learn more about what my drive is doing. And that's awesome. But there's also going to be a few you knuckleheads out there who are going to argue me down and try to twist my words or twist their words and say, no, 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 that's not what they mean. They mean that it is hotter or it, no, no, no. They mean that it does run better when it's hotter. So I would appreciate it if you would keep the comments, you know, kind of chill. Like, don't go like off on your soapbox about how, you know, back in your day, drives could run at 3000 degrees Celsius on the sun and not die. Hey, that's awesome. I'm glad you've had dozens of drives just not fail being on the sun's surface, but that's not my experience. I have had tons of drives. And one of the things that I also would like to quickly notate before we kind of dive off into the finish of this video is that if you're running your drive in an overheated state, and let's just say it's even close to it, or you, you have a couple thermal spikes that just really stress that controller enough to put it in a shutdown mode where it just does not want to power back on or it damages your data. What What is your plan? Okay, I've already made drives before and it's not a fun process. Just personally, it's not a quick process in my opinion. Quick is relative to you know, how long you can be without your, your device, your ally, your computer, your, your Steam Deck. How long are you willing to be down without your storage drive? How much are you willing to put into the thought of, well, what if this happens and what can I do to prevent it? If a $6 heat sink can get you out of danger territory or ensure that you will never get into the danger territory with your temps, I don't think that's a bad thing. Now, a lot of people say, well, if Asus wanted one, it should have had one. I agree. If, if they wanted one, it should have had one. But guess what? Um, oftentimes there are oversights. There are things that just happen outside of our control. People operate these drives in hotter environments sometimes, but most of the one terabyte and two terabyte gen fours run well exceeding the suggested operating temperature range. For example, like the Corsair range, I've seen well above that. So I don't think it's necessarily on ACES to just give us a heat sink, but you also have to keep in mind that we are having SD issues. We are having a overheating uh, environment where the SD cards and SD card readers are failing because they're right next to those MOSFETs. It has nothing to do with the APU temperature. It has nothing to do with, uh, you know, the heat pipes above it. You know, all of that contributes. But if you are looking at it primarily on the board side, up underneath, there's like a little shield that basically is hot boxing the temps from the MOSFETs and all the power delivery. And then on top of that, you have the heat sink. So in combination, that reader gets pretty hot no matter what wattage or what you're doing. It's still delivering and handling the power coming in either from your battery or either from the power adapter. So those MOSFETs get hot. They're, they're pulling in a lot of heat. Um, or they're pulling in a lot of power and they emit a lot of heat. It's just the way they work. I, I unfortunately don't have a solution for it. They don't have a revision yet at the time of filming. So if you're experiencing SD issues, in my opinion, I would hold on to my device. I would buy an NVMe drive and wait. And then when they have a board revision and you know they have a board revision, then I'd RMA it. Currently, they're just swapping the board from what I'm hearing and that may fix the issue temporarily. But if it's putting the same board back in, you might be faced with the same problem. If you are very angry and bitter at Asus, I completely understand. I'm not simping for them, I'm not simping for any brand. I just want to be clear and transparent. I've loved my device. I use the SD card, um, just not primarily for games, but I have, you know, I have in instances run cyberpunk and random things off of it. I just personally am not happy with SD card 
readers in general, and I've had bad experiences with other devices, with other SD cards failing. If you look at Amazon for every SD card ever made, don't look at the first couple of reviews. Click on the one star, click on the two star, click on the three star. Read how many of these reviews are from people where their SD card died and it didn't die in the ally. You'll see somewhere they did die in the ally, don't get me wrong. But you'll see a ton of people saying, oh, this SD card lasted two weeks, it died in my camera. I'm on the fifth one. Oh, this SD card overheats, blah, 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 blah. My camera killed it, this, that, and the other. You will see that the quality control on SD cards is really bad. Like, like in my opinion, it's really bad because I've had a number of them fail. There's not just one thing that's making them fail. So I got off topic, I digress. Um, so back to the NVMe saga, you know, if you have an NVMe drive in your system that you've upgraded, download HWinfo, watch one of my videos before where I show you what to look at. There's gonna be two to three temperatures listed under the drive. You're gonna have the first one is gonna be the memory temp, which is the NAND flash, and then you're gonna have the second temp, which is the controller. The most important one to look at is, in my opinion, the NAND flash, because that's the most sensitive. However, the controller is going to be a little bit hotter, but you still want to keep both of them within the normal operating temperature range. So with that said, I hope this video is helpful. I know it went on a little longer. I'm not sure if anyone kind of watched it to the end, but hey, if you did watch it to the end for all the OGs, you know, drop something in the comments like, you know, chonky boy for the win. Yeah, just, just drop chonky boy for the win in the comments. If you, if you have a question or you have a comment or you need some help, with installing this mod on your device or you just want to shoot the breeze look at my uh, description i've got a link to my discord i'm i'm you know growing every day we're getting new people in there every day stay tuned we got a lot of good stuff coming i got more reviews i got more products coming i've got a lot of stuff on my plate that i'm working on a couple more video ideas so hey if there's anything you want to see by all means let me know i'll add it to the list i'll try to get it done but you know with that said i, I really appreciate your time I appreciate you being patient with me about getting this video out. I've re-recorded this thing like a million times just because I don't like editing. Anyways, without further rambling, I really uh, got to get on out of here and I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to go ahead and try to edit this video and hop this on on the interwebs. But uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you all in the next one. Hope all you all have a good afternoon, good evening, or good night.